Hello and welcome to the fourth part of our tutorial series on Jesmarine Pro. In case you missed them, I've included a link to all the previous tutorials in the description below. Today we're going to talk about MIDI. More specifically, we're going to learn how to use Jesmarine Pro as a controller for your other synths, how to use MIDI controllers to control Jesmarine Pro in more creative ways, and how to sync Jesmarine Pro to other apps, software, and sequencers. So let's start with sync. Tap the tempo and enable follow host sync. This will allow Jesterman Pro to act as a slave to an inter-app audio host, such as the excellent Ohm. Just tap the plus sign to add an audio channel. Then select Jesterman Pro as a source under inter-app audio. If you're looking to sync Jesterman Pro with other software, apps, or your hardware, I highly recommend using this app to sync everything up. To test if it works, you can change the tempo on your host, and then head back to Jesterman Pro. And there you have it, now Jesterman Pro is synced. Now that that's done, Let's talk a bit about how to control other apps and synths with Jesterman Pro. Let's get into MIDI outputs. First of all, I'm going to plug a camera connection kit into my iPad. This allows me to hook up a synth or MIDI interface that takes MIDI over USB. To start sending MIDI to your device, tap the cog wheel, then select your synth under the output menu. This works the same way if you're looking to send MIDI to another app as well. Now that we're set up, we can have a listen. <laughs> As you might suspect, we're going to go a bit deeper here. Let's open up the instrument settings and scroll down to the sound generator. At the bottom you'll find the MIDI settings. Here you can assign a channel or a custom CC to the instrument. For this example I've set the custom CC to 102, letting us modulate the cutoff frequency. To make it a bit more playable, I'm going to assign the custom CC to slider 1. By adding another instrument and setting it to the same MIDI channel as the one before, we gain access to another voice and another CC to control. If you're not sure how to do this, please check out our previous videos. On this instrument I'm going to set the custom CC to 103, which allows me to control the filter resonance. Then I'm going to set the control source to cursor Y position. Then I'll invert the scaling using the breakpoint function and head back to instrument A, setting the control source to cursor X position instead of slider 1. This allows me to control more parameters only using the cursor instead of having to waste a hand on controlling a slider. Now, there's another way to do this as well. Just tap the cogwheel again and enable Send Instrument Indicator CC. This means that each cursor will start sending the MIDI data specified under MIDI controls. Here you can select different channels and CCs for each individual cursor parameter, or even turn them off if you so choose. If you head back to the settings, you can do the same thing for controls such as sliders. Just enable Send Controls. To edit these, Tap and hold the controller, then select MIDI controls. Now we're going to look at MIDI input. To demonstrate, I'm going to use my Novation circuit to make Chesterman Pro into a sort of musical etch-a-sketch. This will work with any MIDI controller that has three or more knobs, so feel free to follow along. First of all, you want to go back to the settings and go down to MIDI input. Under input, you want to choose your MIDI controller. Then open up MIDI controls. Here you'll see a full list of the parameters and controllers you can manipulate using MIDI input. So what you want to do now is go to the cursor you want to control and select Cursor X. Here you can either manually enter a channel and CC for the parameter, or you can just press Learn and turn the knob you want to use. These settings apply to MIDI output as well. So changing these settings here will also apply to what Jesmarine Pro is putting out to your external gear and software. Next, we're going to do the same thing for Cursor Y, but with another knob. Press Learn, turn the knob. 
Finally, we're going to map the last knob, the cursor pressure. This will let us control instrument velocity, depending on how your patch is set up. So press learn again, and turn the knob. In this example, I'm using the chord progression generator from our last video. If you want to download this patch, I've included a link to our blog in the description. Or if you want to learn how to make it yourself, watch the third episode of our tutorial series. Before we play the patch, we're going to do one final thing. Tap the overlapping circles to go to the cursor settings. Then tap and hold the cursor indicator and enable hold. This allows the cursor to act as if it's being held without you having to keep a finger on the screen. Let's try it out. As you can see here, I'm controlling the cursor's position in the play area using the two knobs. And that's it for today. As usual, there's a lot more waiting to be uncovered beneath the surface here, but that's the point of this series. We want to give you the basics so you can start experimenting on your own. Let us know in the comments below if you have any other questions about MIDI or Jessamine Pro in general, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.